Rishi Sunak, Glenn, the next prime minister, who is he? What's his background? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so he is, his background is, is in the uh, financial industry. He is of uh, Indian descent. Of course, his parents uh, were from uh, India who immigrated to the United Kingdom uh, f via Africa. He was born, he's a young guy, uh, only 42 years old, um, but as British as they come in terms of kind of his educational background, he went to some of the best schools, went to Oxford, uh, later uh, attended university in California at Stanford where he met his current wife who is enormously wealthy. She is a, a, essentially an heiress of a, a giant uh, Indian uh, tele, uh, 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 computer company. Uh, together they have a net worth of something in excess of 700 million British pounds. Uh, so uh, that is, of course, something that has got a lot of attention uh, recently as the United Kingdom, like so many other uh, Western countries, deals with inflation and the high cost of living. Uh, and there's questions about whether or not he can be really responsive to that when he himself is uh, so wealthy. Um, um, he was previously a chancellor of the Exchequer, essentially the finance minister in the British government uh, under Boris Johnson. And he quick cabinet and was really to kind of started the ball rolling to Boris Johnson having to resign uh, over Partygate. Those were allegations that Johnson and others were seen flouting COVID-19 rules, including uh, on the back patio of 10 Downing Street. Uh, so he was kind of an ally of, of Johnson's and then a rival uh, as well. He ran against Liz Trust. For the, in the leadership race to replace Johnson, uh, lost to her, uh, but now uh, trust gone, of course, and now he's, he's um, uh, going to, going to uh, take over the job uh, that, that she is, is leaving. Uh, you know, it, it, the fact that he has a, a background, a, 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 a Southeast Asian ba a background, uh, will be certainly interesting. He is the first British prime minister of color. Uh, to uh, take that job. And, you know, this really does reflect the changing face of Britain. Of course, it is a very uh, ethnically diverse country now and becomes increasingly so every year. So uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how people respond to him. Uh, but, of course, his economic policies are also going to be under scrutiny. He is considered to be uh, more right wing, a Brexit supporter as well. And he, during the pandemic, he played kind of the same role that maybe Christian Freeland played in Canada. He was, you know, managing all that COVID relief money that the, the, that the uh, British government spent uh, to help people get through the pandemic. Uh, but Labour is, is very concerned about the kind of cuts that he is potentially going to bring in uh, once, once he forms government. Mm. Yeah, and Glenn, just for our viewers who are just joining us, Rishi Shunak to become the next UK Prime Minister after Penny Mordaunt dropped out of the Tory leadership race. She says in a statement that she has given Sunak her full support. She didn't have uh, the support that was needed. She struggled to reach that 100 MP threshold. So, Glenn, as you're describing Rishi Sunak's background, I'm also wondering if the British public will be open to giving him a chance or if the calls will continue for a general election. Yeah, that's a really uh, important question. I mean, his first job is going to be a healing his own party because it is a party that is divided. It has gone through uh, many uh, tumultuous weeks, uh, starting uh, with the exit of Boris Johnson back in July. And, of course, uh, Liz uh, Truss's a brief time at 10 Downing. Uh, so they have a lot of uh, fences to mend kind of within, the, within their own caucus. And that's going to be the thing that he's going to, uh, I think, apply himself to uh, first. Uh, but then, yes, there are going to be a lot of calls. And we've already heard it from uh, the, the Labour leader, as well as the uh, uh, Scottish uh, Prime Minister who was on uh, television this morning, uh, reiterating again the demand to have a general election because they feel that, this should not be just members of the Conservative caucus, this small group of 357 men and women who decide who Britain's prime minister will be. It should be put to the general electorate. Conservatives have a majority in Parliament now. They don't have to go to the polls until January of 2025, so they've got a lot of runway. But there's going to be increasing pressure, uh, both from the opposition and also from the general public, and possibly even some people within the Conservative caucus who would like to see Sunak tested uh, out on the hustings and uh, face the British electorate in order to get uh, his choice as uh, a prime minister confirmed by them. Uh, but it's not something I think it's going to happen at, in the short term. The British government is facing some of the same problems that the, the federal government in Canada faces. They are extremely unpopular right now because of, in part, the high costs of living, uh, rising uh, inflation. Recent polls have put uh, Labour Party 
uh, very much ahead of the conservatives if there were to be an election uh, held today. They, uh, some of the polls predicting with Sunak as leader that Labour would win a very strong majority in the hundreds of seats, um, a, a, a plurality uh, over the conservatives. So th they don't really have a huge appetite, Marcia, uh, to go to voters just right, right now. Glenn McGregor starting us off with this breaking news from London this morning. Glenn, thank you for all of that.